At the tail end of Fighters Pass 1 was a character whose release was to be expected given empirical data yet was still received with a bit of controversy for reasons that could only really be summed up as there were so many others who could have taken the spot besides them. Byleth was the 75th standalone fighter to be brought into Smash and the 6th DLC fighter in the game. Having been released just after the commercial success of Fire Emblem Three Houses, it was only natural for them to be included in the game seeing as the main protagonist from every major Fire Emblem title that came before met the same outcome. And though they did receive a fair bit of backlash as evident by the like ratio on the official trailer, the character would have a fairly lackluster competitive debut. What I find unusual about this situation is that Smash is a very monkey see monkey do kind of game. When a pro player finds tournament success on multiple occasions, they inspire spectators to pick up that character and do the same. The meteoric rise of Spargo brought Cloud back into public attention, and Cloud is now a very widely used character. So one would think, if the best player in the world found repeated top placements as super majors, the same would happen for Byleth, but it didn't. For today's episode of Why No One Plays, we'll be finding out exactly why that's the case. Even before the release of Min Min and Sephiroth, prevailing wisdom on appropriate limits for non-projectile disjointed range was being pulled apart at the seams. With the inclusion of Shulk and Cloud, characters were becoming increasingly more capable of threatening large spaces, which became more apparent as the Belmonts and Ridley came in. Byleth would push the envelope even more with some of their moves, namely those that made use of Arid Bar. This along with a repertoire of other attacks established yet another sortie with an overwhelming range advantage, a favorable trait to have in Ultimate's metagame. Early on, players were quick to write them off as a mid-tier at best. Their underwhelming attributes coupled by an ambiguous game plan made it difficult for them to stand out in an already highly competitive and saturated category. The only one who gave them even a modicum of exposure was MK Leo himself, whose first documented top-level instance was, I believe, at Frostbite 2020 but for only a game or two at most. Of course, around that time is when we entered the Wi-Fi period, where Leo didn't really care to attend many events at the start. The radically different landscape of online tournaments was ironically unhelpful to Byleth's development, which may very well be the reason they had such a poor start. A series of buffs were given to them in version 11 though, and while they were mostly aimed at attacks that weren't exactly bread and butter staples, they were enough to make them pose as veritable dangers for their opponents, demonstrated on full display during the Smash World Tour, where Leia would solo Byleth all the way to victory and then for more victories during early 2021 and 2022, garnering arguably more success on the supposed mid-tier than when he piloted Joe. Joker. Through his sole efforts, the community's viewpoint on the character elevated them to a high tier, viable enough to see competitive play. In spite of this, Leo was still the only one committed to using them, at one point making up almost two-thirds of all results obtained by the character, indicating he was practically the only person who could make the character work at high and top level. And even though we have a few regional threats in various locations like Riseyasu in Japan and Justin in the US, Violet has yet to see any meaningful representation. To make matters worse, even Leo's usage of the character has been diminishing rapidly, choosing instead to go Joker or Aegis more often at recent majors. It's rare for a character with such an extensive resume of high-profile achievements to not lead to more players picking them up, and I can't think of anyone who highlights this more than Byleth. In my opinion, the biggest reason attributing to their failure is that they're never in a position where they can comfortably make the first move. Everyone is well aware of their abysmal movement physics, having both terrible ground and air maneuverability. When you look at the top 20 characters, virtually all of them have above average if not spectacular physics. The ones who don't, however, have ways to make up for that by never letting their opponent be in a position to make the first move, and or they have something that punishes them for doing so. Let's look at Min Min. Her mobility in both the ground and the air is also quite lousy, but her nigh uncontestable range and coverage basically invalidates a lot of characters, as they can't even get within range to hit her even if they have superior mobility. If they do manage to get in range, up smash and neutral air will send them flying right back out. The presence of his grenades makes it dangerous to recklessly charge at him and take advantage of his otherwise poor movement. At the same time, he can zone you out with grenades and missiles, forcing you to do something about it whether you like it or not. We can't really use the argument that Byleth has a poor out of shield game, as up smash comes out frame 13, not the fastest, but enough to punish a dash attack or the like. Neutral air comes out frame 9 out of shield, which is definitely fast enough to be considered good, and so of the creator also comes out at frame 9. So if need be, they can mount a strong defense. If their opponent is a bit too trigger happy on shield, they can lay a few hits on them for doing so. But even when in a favorable position, Byleth doesn't have the freedom to exert pressure without putting themselves at risk. Oftentimes, for slow top tiers, the difficult part of their game plan is getting up close enough to exert their pressure. 
In many cases, Snake wants you to get up close to him so he can abuse his variety of tools. Kasuya would love nothing more than for his opponent to approach him for obvious reasons, but that's only because if given the opportunity, they can bully their opponent into making four stairs or cowering in shield, something they can punish in more ways than the number of One Piece episodes. The way Byla's moveset was constructed, whether by design or accident, makes it very uncomfortable for them to play the game at a pace faster than their own, making speed their worst enemy, both in frame data and movement. We can easily see this through their aerials. Forward and back air are almost identical in terms of coverage, attacking directly in front or behind them, although they do reach quite a distance. Up air has generous vertical coverage and is a very dangerous juggle tool thanks to high knockback scaling. Overall, these are very strong aerials to have if we go by their range and damage output, but two things hinder their usefulness by a noticeable degree. One being their frame data, and two, their safeness on shield, or lack thereof. Sorties probably benefited the most from the universal landing lag reduction given to all characters in Ultimate, as it made their already safe aerials even harder to punish, if not impossible when properly spaced. Comparing Byleth to another relatively slow swordy like Ike, their aerials are much less safe on shield than his, and Ike's aerials are considered by many to be unsafe relative to the cast. Even their neutral air is minus 9 at best, making it very easy to punish by most up B, Nair, or even up smash out of shields. You might be able to get away with a fair and bear if you space it, but bear in mind, most of these attacks are 1-2 to two frames off, as you would have to be frame perfect to get that spacing. So when you see like minus 7 on shield, it's more like minus 9 or sometimes minus 10 in practice, pushing Violet's aerials out of the I can spam this attack however much I want and you can't do anything about it threshold. With startups in the double digits, they can also get beaten out by anyone with a decently fast rising aerial, and a lot of characters have one. Violet's actions all require commitment, and commitment exposes you to counterattack and punishment. With poor ground and air physics as well as no burst movement options like Steve Minecart or Anvil, if Byleth wants to approach, they have to commit to an approach. If they want to evade, they have to commit to evasion. You'll notice Byleth players tend to roll a lot, but that's because that's all they can really do since they can't run away. Any attack that will be salvaged in one way or another is offset by their own flaw. Down smash and down air can potentially break shield in one blow, but their egregious startup and end lag makes them unviable for anything besides a hard read. Long range attacks like forward and back air have narrow hitboxes to offset their range. Attacks that are fast like dash attack or neutral air lose a lot of effectiveness from how punishable they are on shield. With all this in mind, Byleth can't even play the mid range where they're supposed to excel at without putting themselves at risk, ultimately negating a sortie's greatest strength which is their ability to act first at no risk to themselves. Close range fighters usually have to buy their time and wait for a careless approach or opening from their opponent to get their combos in. That's why a lot of them play defensively or evasively until they get that chance. Once they do, they can go to town on you. Mid and long range fighters are the opposite. They're strong when acting first and weak if that attack is responded to. Therefore, the onus is placed on them to position correctly and space attacks well enough to ensure they can exert pressure without exposing themselves. The problem with Byleth is that even if they space their attacks and position correctly, they're not safe for the sheer fact that their frame data doesn't allow them to be. Most conventional out of shield options can punish their forward and back air unless you literally max range them or drift back as you do it, which they can't really do given their bad air physics. That kind of defeats the purpose of their forward and back air being mid-range poke tools that you're meant to strike first with. The only realistically safe aerial you can spam in neutral is fittingly neutral air, which to their credit can lead to a dash attack or forward air at the right angles, but neutral air is super easy to up grab, up smash your aerial out of shield. So against anyone with any of those options, which is almost everyone, Byleth can't pressure them safely. The lack of offensive options makes the character very awkward to play, as you almost have to play them like a heavyweight but without the margin for error heavyweights have. That is, throw attacks out and hope they get hit by them. The number of times Leo had to cheese a stock with tipper forward smash at like 30% or his down smash into down airs to shield break is too high to count. For example, at main stage 2021 when he reversed Spargo game 5, he went for a YOLO down air right before the final sequence to take the game which we all thought was desperation, but given the situation that was a Hail Mary worth going for. Besides that, let's take a look at the final sequence. Leo and Spargo were in neutral for a few seconds, Spargo switched to Mithra and dashed in, but since Mithra's initial dash is so long he gets stuck in it, letting Leo get a landing forward air off that he wouldn't have if Spargo didn't dash into it that led to a dash attack conversion followed by a read on Spargo's double jump air dodge before ending it all with a down air once Mithra was exhausted of all further options. That right there is a textbook example of conditioning and fundies, but what that situation highlighted was how Leo basically had no choice but to quote unquote cheese Spargo for the win. If Byleth had to win the old fashioned way, he was going to lose, so the only way he could win was by forcing a situation where he could go for these YOLO plays. Given that it's Leo, he's pretty good at making them happen, but realistically, I don't think anyone wants to play a character who unironically depends on these moments to win games. 
It's kind of the same concept I brought up with Incineroar, where to win you have to go for a crazy YOLO play, except Byleth isn't in the right class to play like that. Sorties are meant to play mid-range, stage control fundies, not forward smash hard reads. If you're gonna play that kind of character, you may as well fully commit to playing Incineroar or Ganondorf, not someone like Byleth. I'm not implying they're unable to exert pressure or play the neutral game. Their range advantage is still a range advantage, but they're missing the traditional strengths that come from having a range advantage either because they don't have sufficient frame data to match that range, or the physics or something else gets in the way of optimal usage of it. Sephiroth's frame data and safety on shield is also uncomfortably bad, but he has more range than Byleth and more importantly the speed to extend it. Byleth can't kite back with retreating back airs or drift back forward airs the way Sephiroth can, yet at the same time they can't mash on your shield up close the way Lucina or Cloud can. The only thing Byleth has that those guys don't is situationally powerful if not borderline cheesy tools. Since their attacks are unsafe, players might get complacent holding shield, which they can exploit with a down air or down smash. If they have an exploitable recovery, you can go off stage and up to spike them, forward smash at the ledge to kill them at 30 if you catch their jump or neutral getup. The threat of these callouts are very much real, but they're not good enough to maintain usefulness even if the opponent is aware of them. Back in my Why Everyone Plays Snake video, I talked about how the difference between him and mid-tier matchup checkers is that even if you know all the ways you can get cheesed by Snake, that doesn't make him any less dangerous. Whereas for mid-tiers, just being aware of them is enough to render them more or less ineffective. For instance, Cloud's back air, minus 3 on shield, long range. Those who don't know that it's unpunishable might try to grab out a shield or up smash or do something that's not fast enough to which Cloud can counter punish. But even if you know that Cloud's back air is near unpunishable, that doesn't change the fact that it's still something you have to worry about. Byleth doesn't really have this privilege. If you're aware of down air or down smashing coming due to a weakened shield, you can use that to your advantage by baiting Byleth into going for a down air or down smash and punish their massive end mic. It's not like you can punish Cloud's back air even if you see it coming because the attack's properties are just really that good. Circling back to my point on Byleth never really having the comfortability to do what they want to do, unless fighting someone just as or slower than them. So then, why are they a high tier if I made such a big deal out of their flaws? The reason Leia was able to achieve so much success on them is that they have just enough practical tools to where you can make up the difference between them and top tiers through skill. Although granted, it's a very big difference to make up for. Byleth is a character all about patience. Their slow mobility, underwhelming frame data, and lack of a first strike means they can't be too irresponsible with their offense. They have to patiently look for opportunities to capitalize on opponents' habits and mistakes, as a careless move on Byleth's end will easily give their opponent just as big of an opening to retaliate. However, therein lies their biggest weapon. Byleth is the ultimate punisher, a very unconventional playstyle to have on a sortie. Few characters, especially sorties, can screw over their opponent as hard as Byleth can. Sorties win games by reading their opponent's habits in neutral and disadvantage and punishing them, using their generous area coverage to cover multiple options. Byleth still possesses the same win condition as they do, only they quite literally live and die by it. Getting hit by a cloud back air at the ledge may not be too scary at 70, but getting hit by a Byleth back air at the ledge is a whole different story. I guess if we continue with that comparison, Cloud's aerials are safe on shield, but it's difficult for him to break it since he has to hit you quite a few times. Byleth only needs one down air or down smash to snap you in half. They're a lot more vulnerable of a sortie than a large majority of their peers, but they make up for that by dishing it out just as hard. As one of the greatest players of all time, Leo has fully mastered that win condition during his time on the character and proved to us that such a condition is a viable one to go after. But then again, he's Leo. Not many people can or are willing to play such a risky win condition, especially not when there are more efficient and easier options. In a way, they're the most iconic example of a high tier for me. A character with just enough internal strength to be usable but require the player to put in the extra mile to reach top level. I do think it would have been nice if they had a bit more leeway though. Maybe a bit more safety on shield or a bit less startup, something like that. Kind of like Sephiroth where I feel like they just need a bit more to be popular. Anyways, that's going to be it for today. Let me know your thoughts on the character in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with my points. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsvarim, join my Discord server, and check out my other Why No One Plays episodes if you haven't yet. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Take care.